Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, I'm going to give you an introduction to solving trigonometric equations in first degree. And then later in other videos, you'll take a look at how to solve second degree trig equations. Now, the trig equations that we're going to take a look at today will all be solved, or most of them will be solved, uh, where the angle is in radians. So solving a trig equation, it means to find the angle which gives a particular ratio. Remember that for each ratio, the trig functions are positive and negative in two quadrants. So therefore, there will often be then two solutions for each ratio. Now let's take a look at exact values first, and then we'll take a look at approximate values after. Now, when I ask you to solve for the exact value, that means to be able to write the solution as a rational number. So this means that you're going to use the special triangles or the basic sine, cosine, and tangent graphs to solve. So to help us, I'm going to draw our two special triangles over here on the side. And one of them is our pi over 6, pi over 3 triangle. So that will give us root 3 on the bottom here, 1 and 2. And then the other triangle is our pi over 4, pi over 4 triangle, which has the ratios 1, 1, and root 2. So we're going to use these triangles um, and refer to them when we're solving. So let's take a look at the first equation. So it says that sine theta is equal to a half. So we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So taking a look at the two triangles, we can see that the first one, opposite is 1, hypotenuse is 2, therefore our angle has to be pi over 6. So we're going to call this our reference angle, which is going to be pi over 6. Now we know that sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So I'm going to draw my two quadrants here to help us visualize this. So to find the first angle, if I actually drew this out, we know this is 1, and 2. And then in the second quadrant, the height would be 1. And again, the hypotenuse would be 2. So our first angle is this little angle here. And that happens to be our reference angle, pi over 6. The second angle goes all the way to the second quadrant. Now again, we know that this reference angle is also pi over 6. So to find the second angle, if we go all the way, well not all the way, but halfway around, that would be pi, but that would be too much. So we need to take away our reference angle of pi over 6, and then we're left with this purple arc that I've drawn there, which is 5 pi over 6. So our two solutions for this first question is pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. All right, let's take a look at another one. So here we have tan theta equals 1. So again, for this one, let's write this as 1 over 1, so we can see it as a fraction. So this would be our opposite divided by adjacent. And we can see that would be our pi over 4 or pi over 4 triangle, and it doesn't really matter which angle because of the same. So our reference angle is pi over 4. So again, drawing my two angles, I know that tan is positive in the first quadrant. So this will be pi over 4, because it's 1 and 1. But tan is also positive in the third quadrant. So this could also be 1 and 1, and this reference angle is pi over 4. So one of our solutions is in the quadrant 1, so that happens to be our reference angle. And our second angle starts in standard position on the positive x-axis and goes all the way around to quadrant 3. Now, as it's going around, we know that halfway around is pi, but it goes a little bit more than pi, so we need to add pi over 4 to get to the third quadrant angle. So pi plus pi over 4 is then 5 pi over 4. And then this is our second solution. 
All right, let's take a look at one more. And in this example, we're going to take a look at a reciprocal trig function. So in this question here, we have cotangent theta plus root 3. So let's isolate our trig function. So we have cotangent theta is equal to negative root 3. And we'll write this as a fraction, so root 3 over 1. And remember, this is the reciprocal. So this is not going to be opposite over adjacent, but adjacent over opposite. So when we take a look here, we can see it's root 3 over 1. It's the first triangle here, root 3 and 1. Therefore, our reference angle has to be pi over 6 here on the bottom. So theta, our reference angle, is pi over 6. So drawing again on my grid, my two angles, this time cotangent, we're looking for the negative values. So the ratio is negative in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 4. Reference angle here is pi over 6, so I'm going to actually put that in right away this time. And the two angles that we want, one starting here goes all the way to quadrant 2. Okay, so to find that we have pi, meaning that we would surpass the angle and go all the way to pi, but we need to subtract pi over 6 because our angle is actually less than pi. It's pi over 6 less. So this gives us 5 pi over 6. And then the second angle goes all the way past pi all the way to quadrant 4. So this one, we find this by, now if we go all the way around a full circle, that will be 2 pi, but 2 pi is going to be too much. So this will be 2 pi minus pi over 6. And if you got the common denominator, this would give you 11 pi over 6. And that's the big arc. So in this question, notice that the reference angle is not the solution, but that we use the reference angle to find the two solutions, which are in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. Okay, next we're going to take a look at how to solve trick equations with approximate values. Now I'm going to jump to another page. All right, so when you're solving approximate values, you're going to use the calculator uh, by pressing shift, inverse, or the second button, uh, depending which cal calculator you have. And then also make sure that you are in the correct mode. So make sure that you press mode button until you get to degrees or radians. And this will be indicated by the restrictions. So this first example that I have for you here, it actually says that theta is between 0 and 360 degrees. So make sure the calculator is in degree mode. So we're going to type this in and say that the reference angle is the inverse cos, so cos with a negative 1. But we're going to type this in to the calculator with a positive value. Okay, so notice I ignore the negative sign. So when I do this, I'm going to get a reference angle of 62.1 degrees. All right, so now I'm going to draw where cosine is negative because this says negative cosine is negative in quadrant two and in quadrant three so here we have our reference angle here of 62.1 degrees here and 62.1 degrees here to find the first angle which is in quadrant two we're going to take 180 degrees and we're going to subtract 62.1 degrees because if we go 180 that's too much and we need to subtract 62.1 so that gives us 117.9 degrees to find the second angle which is all the way here in quadrant 3 this time we need to take 180 degrees but we need to add 62.1 degrees so adding this we're going to get 242 Point 0.1 degrees because we need to take 180 and add a little bit more. So our two solutions are these two big angles here. 
All right, let's take a look at what happens when we are solving in radians. Okay, we can see it's in radians because the theta is between 0 and 2 pi. All right, so first thing is make sure your calculator is in radian mode and then type this in as normal. So we're going to go inverse 10 of 1.432. This is our reference angle. And when we type this in, we get 0 0.9. Six. All right, so drawing our grid, we're going to put 10 in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4 because that is where it is positive. So our first angle is actually 0 0.96, same as our reference angle. So this is one of our solutions. Our second angle is all the way in quadrant 3. And in quadrant 3, we need to take pi plus our reference angle. And when we do that, we get 4.10. Now, a point to note about this is when you type in pi, make sure that you're not just using 3.14, but you're using the built-in pi in your calculator. All right, let's take a look at one more here. So cotangent theta. Now, this one, there is no cotangent button. So what you're going to have to do is take the reciprocal of cotangent, which is tan theta. And then we also have to then take the reciprocal of negative 0 0.137. So that's going to be negative 1 over 0 0.37. So when you type this out to find your reference angle, I recommend that you put brackets around 1 over 0 0.37 so that we know that it's a fraction. And when you type this one out, you get 1.22. All right, so tan or cotangent is negative in quadrant 2 and also in quadrant 4. So to find the two angles, I'm going to place my reference angle. And we want to find this angle in quadrant 2. So that's going to be pi minus 1.22, so that's going to give us 1.93. And then the second angle, which is all the way in quadrant 4, we need to take 2 pi, and then we need to subtract 1.22, which gives us 5.07. Okay. And we had to subtract in both cases because the angle in quadrant 2 is a little bit less than pi, and the angle in quadrant 4 is a little bit less than 2 pi. All right, the last equations we're going to take a look at I involve using graphs to solve. So we're going to use a graph to solve when the trig function is equal to 0, 1, negative 1, or it's undefined. So let's draw the sine function. So the sine function looks like this. So we're going to assume that you know how to draw graphs already. And so this will be 0 to 2 pi. And this will be pi, 1, and negative 1. So we can see that sine theta is 0, that's 0, and pi. We don't need to include 2 pi because in restrictions, it doesn't include 2 pi. For tan theta, recall that the graph looks something like this. And then it gets repeated again. So this is at 0. So theta is 0 at 0 and also at pi because there's an asymptote here at pi over 2. And then for the last one, secant theta equals negative 1. We need to take the reciprocal. So cos theta is also equal to negative 1. And the cos graph looks something like this also from 0 to 2 pi and pi, max of 1, min of negative 1. And we can see that cos theta is equal to negative 1 down here on the bottom at pi. So that's how you can use a graph to solve trig equations.